before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I am so, so, so excited about the episode that we have for you guys today. Just a quick little introduction before we get into the episode, because um, I know I've picked up quite a few subscribers since then, and I just want to make sure that our new subscribers feel welcome to the channel and know what's going on so again my name is bryce this channel esoteric atlanta is a channel that's dedicated to researching the wacky and the weird of the world including historical events and folklore and legends we also look at current events as well and what i typically tend to do is look for patterns in these stories that show us more information about the controllers of their world and their alleged plans for humanity and so for the news new subscribers i'm not predominantly just a son of sam channel in fact i cover so many different stories so many different deep dives but i am super 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 excited that you're here and i cannot wait to hear everybody's thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below at the end of this episode now for our new subscribers here on the channel the reason why I came across the Son of Sam conspiracy was because of my late friend, Doug Kramer. Doug Kramer mysteriously, in my opinion, mysteriously passed away in December of 2023. His body was found on December 11th of 2023. In my opinion, his passing is a little bit strange. Not going to lie. But that's an episode for a different day. Nonetheless, my my I feel like my karmic duty as his friend is to continue to share his research and his work. And that is how I stumbled across the whole Son of Sam conspiracy and the Maury Terry work. Um, for those who don't know, Doug Kramer was an ex-Scientologist who, after he came out of the Scientology cult, he decided to figure out how L. Ron Hubbard was able to dupe him and dupe so many people. And that led him down, of course, you don't have to de dig too deeply to find uh, L. Ron Hubbard's connection to Jack Parson, Aleister Crowley, all that kind of stuff. And of course, that leads you to more information about Son of Sam, Charles Manson, the Process Church, all that all that good stuff. And so that's why we're here today. And I'm so excited about this guest because this guest has a plethora of knowledge. Um, one of the cool things about this guest today is that he is actually from New York. And I've said this so many times, especially on Aquarius Rising Africa, there's a lot of local color to these stories. Any story like the Son of Sam anywhere in the world is going to have a lot of references to things that someone who's not from New York is is not going to know. I'm from Atlanta. There are just some things that I'm not going to pick up on with this case. And that's what's really cool about Mike is that he is from New York. And so he has a, a different level of understanding than maybe I or Catherine would or even Doug would because Doug was from California. So he'll be on with us today. I do want to address the comment section. As always, we encourage everybody to have a who has a different opinion than the host or the guest to leave your thoughts and opinions down below. However, it's it's quite sad and heartbreaking that we've gotten to this place in our cultural society. We've devolved so much that we don't know how to de debate respectfully anymore. And on this channel, that is compulsory. It is mandatory. You have to debate respectfully on this channel. Again, it is totally fine to have a different opinion. It is totally fine to to not agree with the host or the guest or any of the people commenting in the comment section however you have to debate respectfully no name calling no projection of violence onto myself or my guests or any of the people in the comment section if that happens you will be blocked from this channel we don't play those games on this channel okay you have to remember that people's opinions are not them as people so when you are debating an opinion, you're not debating the integrity of the person, you're debating an opinion. 
Opinions are not people. They're just opinions. And most opinions evolve and change over time. So remember that when you are respectfully giving your criticism or respectfully giving your opinion, if it's different from somebody else, just please be respectful and, and, and speak to that person the way that you would want to be spoken to. That's probably been one of the most shocking things being a YouTuber, to be honest, like where I'm from, men don't speak to women the way that most men speak to women in the comment section of YouTube. And it is horrifying to me. I'm like, how were you raised? So let's let's just go back to having respectful manners. We are all human beings on this planet. It is no skin off my back. I'm open. To, I'm just looking for the truth. I, I and when you're open to look for the truth, you're open to hearing all sides. You know, according to the official narrative, David Berkowitz is that he's the guy. He's the lone guy. That's that's the official narrative. Is he the lone guy? Maybe. I don't think so. In my opinion, I, the evidence, in my opinion, doesn't doesn't point to that. But if you believe David Berkowitz is the lone guy, that's awesome. That's great. That's your opinion. You are totally entitled to your opinion, and you're absolutely welcome to be here with it with that different opinion. But again, you cannot name call. You cannot name call. You cannot go from saying that you have a different opinion and then go to try to um, diss or insult people by the way they look. I mean, I've seen that. It's disgusting. We're not going to do that here on this channel. We're going to be respectful to each other. We all deserve respect. We're all just simply by being human beings and breathing. We deserve to be spoken to with respect. And so, again, absolutely, totally fine. You're totally welcome to have a different opinion. It's no skin off my back what you believe when it comes to this case. We're just talking about all the different theories and what Maury Terry found and what our opinions are on this case and how, how that affects us at, with the world at large. With that being said, I just want to reiterate too that anything we discuss on this on this channel with this case is our opinions. They're not facts. Um, they're just interesting information that we have evidence that Maury Terry uncovered, that Doug uncovered. That's where I've gotten most of my information from is from Doug's research. Um, that make you kind of scratch your head and go some name right here, right? Like it's some stinks in Denmark, right? It's it's something's not right. And so that's all we're doing is we're just contemplating our different opinions on this case and our I, different ideas as to why this case has garnered so much conspiracy around it. So no one's accusing anybody of anything. We are literally just looking and giving our own opinions to the evidence, all right? This is strictly our opinions only. So please make sure, as always, that you do your own research. If this information is fascinating to you, if you're someone like me that stumbled upon this information, we're like, oh my God, this is so fascinating. I would highly suggest reading Mari Terry's book, diving down your own rabbit hole so you are having you have that autonomy to have your own thoughts and your own opinions around the subject. So with that being said, guys, all of Doug's um channel series my mind's gone his channel <laughs> days but not confused doug's channel will be down in the description box below so you can go check out doug's work i'm also going to be going to be putting links to rocker mike's work his many many years of work on the son of sand case down in the description box below as well and and if you're new to this channel and you like the son of sand stuff and that's why you subscribed i'm so excited you're here i can't wait to get to know you i will also put another playlist that i have down called conspiracies i've been covering weird stories for about four years now i have tons and tons and tons of videos over different cases from from our history some of our current event cases as well as folklore and legends and trying to figure out where these stories come from so if this is something that you enjoy i'm gonna put all that down in the description box too so you can go back and look at some of the older episodes so that you can you can have a happy hunting as you go and try to do your own deep dives into these weird and wacky stories and hopefully the more we understand the patterning of the powers that be and the controllers of the world the more we are the better educated we are to make appropriate decisions in our own lives and to not be so ruled by fear because that's what they do right they try to scare us and we go into that low vibration of fear and then they've got control over us but we can understand the game that they're playing we know how they're playing their game then we can take our power back in my opinion so with that being said buckle up guys i'm so excited about this episode thank you so much for being here share this episode if you think you, if you like it and you want your friends to watch it i would be very very grateful to you for that but buckle up let's get into it let's start the show
It's also true that the process church grew. Members began to create new offset factions of the movement. Again, they splinter off just like this is a splinter from Scientology, which is where Maury Terry's theory about the children came from, though the connection remains difficult to prove. The so-called processians also denied any connection to the Manson family, despite the fact that many people believe Manson was influenced by the process as Netflix's the Sons of Sam, a descent into darkness portrays. He definitely was influenced by the process and we'll be getting into that. Process Magazine editor Malachi McCormick explained how the Manson rumor got started. According to Art Forum, McCormick claimed that the Church of Scientology spread the rumor because, according to McCormick, quote, McLean and DeGrimston had stolen the tech, the E-meter, and were considered apostates by Hubbard. The rumors hurt the movement, which declined in popularity after the Manson murders. If what McCormick claims is true, in this way at least, the process never did manage to escape its Scientology roots. I don't think that that's quite accurate, because Scientology would be taking one hell of a chance by trying to discredit him in that fashion. But here's an internal memo. You might find this interesting. Um, about, <laughs> let, me just, let me just say something real quick. They had to put out so many fires because of this process, Church, because they were not only being linked to Manson, but as you see, David Berkowitz. And you'll understand why as we go. But they fair game Maury Terry, set up a whole fair game campaign against him. He's the one that wrote this book. Let me grab it. This book is called The Ultimate Evil, The Search for the Sons of Sam, and it's kind of a huge book, and it's a hell of a fascinating read. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I'm here co-hosting today with my friend Catherine Edwards, and we've got our new friend Rocker Mike on the show today. I'm so excited about this episode. First of all, how you guys doing on this lovely Friday morning, or Friday morning for, for Mike and me, not for Catherine, but... <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Bryce, for having me on. Yeah, and I'm, good, and I'm really looking forward to this three-way conversation because different perspectives always open up something new, and that's what we're looking for. Yeah, and you guys, sure, I'm sure. putting all of Mike's links down in the description box below because, Mike, you've spent a lot of time in this Son of Sam case, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always been something that I've been interested in since – the actual time of Son of Sam in the mid seventies. Um, I was a uh, I was a kid living through those times. Um, I lived in Brooklyn in seventy seven, uh, and um, you know I remember how the city was gripped in fear. Uh, pretty much everything you've heard is true. Uh, you know people were looking for anybody who could be the Son of Sam. Uh, you know even through <laughs> crazy ideas. Oh, that guy looks weird. He could be the guy. Um, you know, and then I read the book, The Ultimate Evil by Maury Terry when, uh, it came out, I think, uh, right after I got out of high school, it came out like in 87 and, um, it's always something that's been interested, interesting to me. And, um, back in 2019, um, I had started doing a podcast with a very popular bartender on the Lower East Side of Manhattan named Rob Rossi. He asked me to do podcasts with him and uh gave him my name rocker mike um based on my musical knowledge and um it started with one show and developed into now four different shows one of them being the son of sam chronicles and we back in 2019 we started discussing it on a show called conspiracy 420 that we still do